everyone, it's Helen here. Finally, today I'm making the Vietnamese baguette. It's called bánh mì in Vietnamese. This is one of the best things that the Vietnamese learned from the French during the colonial period. The Vietnamese bánh mì is a lot more airy and has thinner crust than Western baguettes. It's shorter, super light, with golden crackly crust, with pretty hollow center. It takes a lot of hard work and experience to make the perfect loaf of banh mi. At a local production in Vietnam, all ingredients are well mixed in a processor, then they let the dough rest and divide into equal portions. After that, they shape the buckets, proof them one more time, make slashes and then bake them in the oven. You can check out my sister's channel, Da Nang Cuisine, to see the whole video about the local production in Vietnam. I will also put the links in the description box below the video. I've been working on these recipes for the longest period of time and I've tested over and over for more than 10 times. There's no secret in this recipe. You only just need flour, yeast, water and salt, just like any other kind of bread. The ratio of flour and water might vary depending on where you live. For example, if you live in a warm place and with high humidity, you might want to reduce the water amount a little bit. But the techniques is really important and you have to follow exactly the steps. It's not 100% the same as the bucket that you can buy in Vietnam, but I think it's quite close, maybe you could say 80-85%. I know I'm not an expert in baking or making bread in general, but I really um, try really hard and I hope that you're gonna be uh, contented with the result. So let's begin. You will need 250 grams of all-purpose flour. It equals to 2 cups if you are to measure by loosely pouring the flour into the cups. In a large mixing bowl, add in 3 quarter cups or 180 ml of lukewarm water and sprinkle 1 half teaspoon of active dry yeast over the surface. You can also add in about 1 tablespoon of sugar to easily activate the yeast. Then stir well to get everything well dissolved. After that, add half of the flour into the mixture and stir well. You will get a thick mixture like pancake batter. Uh, it's called sponge. Cover with a piece of plastic wrap or a towel and keep it in a warm place for around 2 to 3 hours or overnight until you see bubbles appear all over the surface like this now we're gonna add in the rest of the flour together with a teaspoon of salt and stir well with a wooden spoon to combine everything together all right so when it's roughly comes together and become less sticky transfer it to a lightly floured working surface and knead well until it's come together into a dough. First, you want to knead by folding method. After that, you fold and push it away from you. This helps the gluten in the dough to develop. Try not pushing too hard to avoid tearing the dough. As you knead the dough, you will notice that it transforms into something much smoother and more elastic. If you're getting tired during the process, just switch them between two hands. Like this, it's a really good exercise here. <laughs> the dough now has become a soft, smooth and elastic ball, which is really nice to touch. Of course, it's gonna be a lot more convenient with a mixer, but uh, kneading by hand also fun sometimes. After kneading for 10 minutes, I gather the dough and pinch the edges together and form it into a nice ball like this. The surface is as smooth as a baby's bottom. <laughs> Place the dough back to the mixing bowl, cover with a kitchen towel and keep it in a warm place for about an hour until it's double in size. 
If you're living in a cold place, just put it in the oven uh, with just the light on and maybe a tray of hot water underneath. After an hour, my dough has risen doubles in size. Carefully remove the dough and transfer it onto a working surface without uh, kneading or deflating the air inside. Divide the dough into three equal portions. Each portion should weight around 130 grams. You can see that the upper part is kind of dry, but the inside is still very moist and soft. Now we're going to form each portion into a ball by stacking the dry surface outside into the center, like this. Just tweak the inside out, pinch the edges together and form it into a nice ball. Then cover with a kitchen towel and let the dough relax for 10 minutes. Now take out one piece of dough, bang it three times on the counter. Use the roots of your hand to flatten it out. Roll it and pinch the edges together. Play both hands on top of the dough and roll it back and forth on the counter. Apply more pressure on your baby finger and less pressure on your thumb. That way you can form a bucket that is broader in the middle and slimmer at both ends. Now place the dough on a piece of parchment paper and cover. Let it rest for one more hour until it's double in size. Now preheat your oven and the baking tray at least 15 minutes before baking. Next, we're gonna make slushies on the bucket. I'm using a paper cut knife, but you can also use a razor blade. Keep your knife at a 45 degrees angle and make a quick and determined slash alongside of the bucket. If you see wrinkles like this, that means I need to slash faster. Slashing is an art and even a professional baker needs many years to perfect that skill, so it really takes some practice. After preheating in the oven, take out the hot tray and lift up the parchment paper to transfer the buckets onto the tray. The oven is now well preheated. As you can see, I place a tray of hot water underneath. I also spray water on the both sides of the oven and onto the buckets themselves. After baking for 8 minutes, I spray water on the buckets one more time and rotate the tray or the parchment paper so that the buckets are browned evenly. After 20 minutes baking in the oven, these are our final products. Not bad, huh? Let the bucket cool down a little on a rack and you might be able to hear the crackling sounds from the crust. It's very important that you preheat the oven and the baking tray really well before baking so it can burst the bucket open through the slashes. It should be easy to press it and you can feel that it's really hollow inside. The crust should have many cracks on it and I should have a flip it over to brown the bottom part a little more. The bánh mì is really standardized in Vietnam and all the baguettes you can buy anywhere, any street corners are just the same. And I didn't really appreciate it that much until I went abroad and started YouTube and you guys requested me to make bánh mì which comes really as a surprise to me because you know why would someone make bucket at home you can just go to the store and buy one of those for a really low price for example this is the small food cart selling bánh mì thịt nu which is real pot bucket sandwich uh, on the street in Da Nang you can smell the grill pots from far far away and when I saw them on the street I just couldn't resist for the fillings, she put in some sweet chili sauce, mayonnaise, patty, some fresh herbs, cucumber, a lot of grilled pork, and even more pork floss. And all of that is selling for just 10,000 dong, which is like only 50 cents US. I know! That's why hardly any Vietnamese make banh mi or baguettes at home 
Firstly, because we normally don't have mixer or oven at home. And secondly, it's so easy and inexpensive just to go to any street corner and grab one. And this is my special version of Vietnamese sandwich. It's bánh mì đặc biệt. I have a video showing how to make all the items for this sandwich. You can click on the picture to go to the video recipe or follow the links in the description box below. Given the fact that I didn't use any special equipment or ingredients, no mixer, no baking stone, or no baguette loaf pan, no special flour, everything will mix by hand from scratch, I'm pretty proud of myself for this result. And you know what? Even you are paying me 10 or 20 euros for this sandwich, I'm not gonna sell it. <laughs> I hope you're gonna give this recipe a try and don't forget to click like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.